Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of the FMCG Guys podcast live from the Retail Media Summit UK. This one is one of the episodes that we're recording once the event is over. And I'm very happy to have here with me Dean Harris from the co-op. How are you? Hi, lovely. Yeah, it's great to, uh, great to meet you. And um, yeah, good to chat at the back end of a, of a great day. Yeah, that way we already have a question on the table, which is how was the conference? How did you find it? Oh, re- really good. A lot of learning and a lot of inspiration and a lot of uh, penny dropping moments. You know, I wish I'd thought of that. Wow. Uh, a lot of notes made, but That's yeah, re- really worthwhile. And it didn't get fatiguing at all because it was a nice mix of panel and content. So yeah, lots to take away. Yeah, uh, back to co-op heavy HQ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like the presentations were not too long, but they weren't like super short, so they could go into some depth as well. Yeah, it was quite a good mix. They started quite light-hearted in it. They had an informal tone to the way yeah. they presented yeah, them yeah, as yeah. well. So yeah, you, you, yeah. you were on the ed- edge of your seat quite a bit and a few comedians in between the presenters as well. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Which always helps as well. We, <laughs> yeah. we, we all like a bit of humor. And we're in the UK, so British humor is a must, no? As well. <laughs> yeah. um, so you're coming from the co-op. Where do we start? Like, maybe you can tell us a bit about the co-op. Um, we spoke earlier today about the co-op a little bit. Um, yeah. And there's, there's some metric where it's the number two UK grocer, right? The supermarket. So. Yeah, co-op is the market leader in the convenience sector. Mm. So if comparable to overseas, like the 7-Eleven type of industry, mm-hmm. smaller shops tend to be more accessible than your large supermarkets that are out of town. So we've got about two and a half thousand stores across the whole of the United Kingdom, one in every single postcode or zip code, you might say, across yeah. the UK. So. Co-op's quite a well-established brand. I think it started in 1844. So oh, we've, wow. been, we've been going. That's quite a while. We've been going a while. So that 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 tends to be us. And um, because of the nature of conveniences, a pop in, pop out, usually lower spend than your supermarket trolley shop. That's why there's a high footfall. So mm. I think we're the second most visited retailer, grocery retailer go. in the in the UK because of that in and out uh, aspect to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And. Um, and where's the where's the headquarter of the co-op? It's in Manchester. Ah. So the very first shop was in Rochdale, which is kind of North Manchester. So the head office is right by uh, Manchester Victoria train station, right in the hustle and bustle of the city centre. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's great. And and so you're basically the main super, supermarket chain or retail grocery chain based in Manchester, no? Yeah. So there's there's the only we're the we're the only one based in Manchester. I think we've got Morrison's. Uh, and as they're over in Yorkshire yeah, and Leeds yeah, way, yeah. but yeah, in, in Manchester, that's uh, that's our territory. Isn't yeah, it? yeah, yeah, that's good. That's good. <laughs> Nobody can go in there now. <laughs> and basically, you 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 mentioned to me before that you're running retail media and another space, right? Yes, I've been looking after Corp's membership rewards membership or loyalty rewards. rewards. Yeah. Uh, members are are like shareholders there or co-owners, so it's not just a loyalty program. So we, oh we, really? Ah, so it's literally a co-op. Yeah, yeah, it's a cooperative yeah, business. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we obviously want to reward them with offers, with discounts, with experiences. So I'm responsible for those mo- those incentives, mm-hmm. the more monetary incentives. So our offers in our app, our in-store deals, any like gamification in our app that we reward members with. So mm-hmm. I've been looking after that for the last two and a bit years. Mm-hmm. And then more recently, as of January this year, retail media, because we saw the close connection between loyalty data, first party data, and a sort of growth opportunity. So yeah. Corp actually moved the retail media team mm-hmm. into, into our remit. So that's great. How did you get to this role? Like, what's your background? Oh, oh I've been at Corp 10 years. I remember um, doing a sort of meet me with the team where you go through like where you've worked. And yeah. McCann Erickson Advertising Agency, spent a year at a university trying to acquire students. I could only last a year, they were a bit intense for me. Uh, <laughs> those, those focus groups were quite intense. Then co-op, and then yeah, 10 years, nine roles, CRM, well, uh, brand planning, customer strategy, trade planning, and looking after membership, which is now the, the, the number one priority for co-op is growing our membership program yeah. and uh, rewarding those members. Yeah, that's no, super interesting because I, I've spoken today with different people that work in retail media and it's quite interesting how people come from different backgrounds. Yeah, yeah, there's loads of them because you because it's a, an up and coming thing. You can, yeah. you, you, some people will have commercial experience, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, some merchandising, some data, some CRM, some loyalty. You'll have some from the brand side going to the retailer side and it's, it's so diverse because yeah. you, 
you need to know how a store runs, but you need to understand data in retail media, you need to understand the shopper, the brand interactions. Yeah. And even more, the, the challenging bit is, is the technology. Like, there's so much to get used to in the technology. You know, you've heard, uh, heard of some today yeah. that do things that w w we thought were fiction. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. I mean, and especially for you, since it, you come from more strategy, commercial yeah. side, that's like kind of out of your comfort zone as well. No? Yeah, While there are some people in retail media that do come more from that tech, yeah, yeah, tech yeah. side. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Yeah, no, it's interesting. How so? You picked up retail media earlier this year. Obviously, there's been a big boom in the yeah. last in Europe. It's probably been in the last year. Yeah, year and yeah. Half. Um, what's your take on it, and what are you doing at the co-op to to get up to speed, if if, if you can even? Well, for the, la the last probably seven years, we've been focusing on on our stores, deliver media to our mm -hmm. stores, getting effective store-based campaigns right for our brands. Um, and we've come on, come on a bit of a journey there. Even just the basics of making store, sure the, the point of sale gets put up. Mm. That's a challenge in itself, mm. making sure across two and a half thousand stores, yeah. the hanging boards go up, the floor vinyls go down, mm. the shelf head talkers are on, the screens all show what they're meant to show. Even that, and I think where it's properly taking off now around the world and where everyone's looking and peering at each other and overseas is anything to do with data. Yeah. anything to do with off-site paid media and anything to do with digitization as well so digital screens in the stores so one area we're going to explore more is is leveraging our our, our um, first party data with our membership base mm -hmm. and also trying to make it our media more reactive because if you think about how agile you can be if you're sending cardboard and plastic to a shop i mean that that you're looking like seven weeks out like yeah. you can't respond to weather so if you're like Unilever and a Magnum and, you, and there's that random really hot weekend in October yeah. and you How want to see an opportunity, then? I'd have to have forecasted that weather seven weeks ago. Yeah, 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 so yeah. you really need to be more agile, especially in convenience where it's more unplanned. Impulse, impulse Yeah, term. impulse purchase. So we really need to go into that agile, mm. flexible territory. And the other thing for co-op is we've done retail media, but it, it's a product without a packaging. There's no... There's no Boots Media Group. There's no Morrison's Media Group. Yeah. It's a, it's just a, a discipline, or, or it's done by channels and formats. Yeah. So we need to start thinking about how we differentiate ourselves in that. How we potentially lean on our conv convenience yeah. offering, and, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, obviously yeah. we're really known for being an ethical, trustworthy brand because we don't have a PLC. We don't have the share price pressure. Yeah, we we're, we're, co we're, we're the co-op, yeah. so we're more free and, and with that comes trust and authenticity. Yeah. And when you feel about the challenges we've had with standardization, with transparency, we can really lead in areas mm. like that. Yeah, in summary, lots of exciting things, lots for us to focus on. And I think we're going to have a, a good year next year with yeah, yeah. some fun in the space. It, it, this, the word of to, today's word of this conference has definitely been standardization. Right? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's a word that practically everybody that sat mm. on your in this chair yeah. has mentioned. How are you like working across the industry to to go in that direction? Well, we're we're quite lucky because all the things I mentioned that are kind of growing channels for us, and we're getting our toe in the water, and we have got plans to. We can like listen to the likes of the IAB and ISBAR and go with the standards to yeah. start off mm. with and work with them collectively. I think it's quite challenging if you're already producing metrics yeah, yeah. and then you standardize them, because yeah. what if that two suddenly becomes a one? Yeah, or yeah, if yeah, that yeah. five becomes a four? Yeah, You've yeah, got yeah. a challenge on your hands. Yeah, 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 and that's how retailers are gonna have to face into that if yeah. they're adjusting the way they do the measures. So there's that. And then I think with us again leaning into our brand, we'll be quite comfortable going, we're gonna follow the standard uh, metrics now. We're gonna listen to you. Hmm. Some of the numbers are gonna change and some of the, the things we're gonna show you on our reports are gonna change. So I think we're quite we're quite open to it, and I think, but we we won't have to back check out of too yeah. many measures yeah. because we yeah, can yeah, yeah. start with the standards in place as we go into more first party data and off site media. So if IAB is lobbying for standardisation, you won't be under. It doesn't seem like no, you'll be in the way. It's literally a guide for us, yeah. rather than a uh, a change <laughs> a change yeah, 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 yeah. a change plan. That's interesting. Plant. That's yeah. interesting. And in convenience, like how are you how are you marrying like on-site retail media, you mentioned cardboard, etc., yeah. in-store stuff, with the online part. I, I think with retail media at the minute, if, if you were to be quite blunt, there's two reasons 
a brand might, might, might invest in retail media. One is they, they have access to a part of the purchase journey that they don't own. Yeah. So they can advertise on TV in someone's house. Yeah. They can advertise on the streets yeah. with billboards and they can advertise near a shop with social media. The, to get in a shop, they need to partner with, with, a, with a retailer to do that. So there's a funnel. And then um, on the other side, there's, there's the audience. So they can act that they don't have a lot of uh, data. They don't know who's yeah. buying their things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So a retailer has their data. So the, there's, the store offers a lot of that purchase journey and mm. then the data and the offsite offers a lot of that audience. And if you glue them together, you can really own all yeah. aspects of that journey in an informed way. Yeah. Rather than a brand having little anonymized investment outside the shop, yeah. you know, and, and then again inside the shop, they can m start marrying those two up and follow mm. it all the way through with a retailer. Yeah, I think yeah. that's one of the key things mentioned today, and that's why that insight was great to hear at the start, is that retail media isn't just about making people buy it in the moment yeah. or in the next hour or in the next two hours it does a job like tv does it's the upper final yeah because ultimately any media's job is to reach people and to be remembered yeah right and just because it's in a shop versus on your couch doesn't it should yeah. be perceived in the same way but it, i think that's a key challenge is shift in those perceptions that retail media can do more than just sell on the spot yeah 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 no absolutely because yeah, that's the thing. It's thinking out it like, as they say, a full final yeah. experience, right? Yeah. Um, but if you, I think one of the challenges, they, the contradictions will be mm. it, as a retail media uh, network. If you're constantly reporting on short-term sales, then you're you're creating the own barriers to you being perceived like that. And someone mentioned you should report and evaluate your retail media activity based on the objective. The objective is awareness. Yeah. Don't measure short term sales. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, that's yeah. where we've got to really not just um, hone in on those those ROAS stats all mm. the time if that's no longer the job of retail media. Yeah, yeah. Do you think that being a co-op it's easier to have this longer term view maybe? A little bit. There, there is there is more of an unplanned aspect yeah. to convenience. So if you imagine a big trolley shop, uh, I don't know what you're like, but my wife certainly has a list, and she'll take the list into the shops. Whereas it's rare that anyone walks into a co-op with a list because oh, it's really? usually three, four, five items you mm. need. Might be anything from a bottle of water yeah. to beers at the weekend or for a pizza for that night. So it's very unplanned and yeah. an unplanned mission. So there is a short consideration set there versus the uh, I'll add that to my list because I've seen an advert on on Meta for McVitie's biscuits. Yeah. And now I'll add that to my list. So there are there are different purchase decision making. Journeys. Yeah. What's like your USP for brands to invest in in you? I think it's the value of any media. So, say let's just use the shop as an example. So you've got a coffee brand, say, wants to, a Nescafe, wants yeah. to advertise. In a large supermarket, that's aisle 17, mm. that you've got to walk down. In co-op, five aisles. So you've got the a same amount of footfall that we've just discussed, but a smaller shop. Mm. So you're going to get more eyeballs on yeah. every single piece of media because you don't need to walk down all the aisles in a huge supermarket to see it. So I think that condensed space corresponding with that high footfall hmm. and that impulse mindset yeah. combines to a quite a powerful differentiation model but that's that's mainly how convenience differentiates co-op you've then got a national footprint so you've got two and a half thousand shops so whether i think we've got one on an island in scotland <laughs> we've got the isle of man london manchester leeds got northern ireland so we've got that national footprint so that's that's co-op and then you've got the co-op brand around trustworthy, integrity, mm -hmm. authenticity, mm -hmm. transparency. Mm -hmm. And I think those three are quite powerful yeah. in, in the market. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then obviously our membership program, as that grows, that's going to create more data, more opportunity, more channels. Yeah. Since it's more of an impulse category, and as you said, you ha they have like the backing of the co-op as a, as a trustworthy brand, could it be that it's a good ground to like for new product introductions and so on yeah definitely yeah because you, you you're in that you're in that moment of um uh, spontaneous decision making yeah. and you get to the fixture and you might be i don't know you might have originally planned on buying a kit kat but you need you see a new flavor yeah. of an alternate yeah, chocolate exactly. bar and it's pronounced on the shop and you're stopping your tracks yeah yeah, uh, yeah yeah and you go out and you're not restricted by the well this isn't on my this list isn't on my, yeah yeah so you've got that freedom no, interesting. What? How do you see 
the whole retail media, but even like grocery space evolve in the next year? In the UK, I think I heard this, I don't know if it's true, but I heard the UK grocery market is the most competitive in the world. Wow. So like the lowest margins, because that's usually a sign of competitiveness, isn't it? It's mm. that thin because you, and I know the likes of Walmart came in and left, they had yes, Asda and had yes, to leave. True. So some of I've come, some dead, not try, because it's that, it's yeah, not yeah, got yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. So it's very intense. And what retail media is doing is it, it's allowing, creating an ecosystem or a business model for UK grocery to, to deliver even more value to their customer base. So if you think about loyalty programs as an example, there used yeah. to be one reason why you'd make your loyalty program good. You wanted those people to spend more money with you. And the better your loyalty program was, the more money they'd spend and you'd keep them and you'd have a bigger share mm. of market. Now you know that there's a multiplier effect of them re retaining and swiping mm. and giving you their data and accessing your media. So you've got the retail media model and you've got the consumer spending more model and both that is going to benefit the shopper. Okay. Because you've got more reasons to offer better value and better experiences. Yeah. So I can see the UK um, market evolving more around loyalty propositions and everyone's doubling down on loyalty and you'll see all these penetration of loyalty programs increase to the likes of, uh, which is a bonkers stat, isn't it? 96% of Kroger. Of Kroger, I yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I sat so, with Michael here before and we talked about it. Yeah. 96% yeah, is crazy. So, so co-ops co -ops around the low 30s at yeah, the minute. Yeah. Because creating a reason for someone to use a loyalty card when they're coming in for a bottle of water it's, is, yeah. is difficult. Yeah, yeah. So that's our challenge. Yeah. How do you get those percentages yeah. right up there? 